Hello friends, my name is David, and today I'm sharing with you a very scary and creepy story. On the morning of July 1st, 2018, a 79-year-old senior citizen, Guru Charan Singh, was getting ready for his morning walk as usual. He left his house and walked to the grocery store in his neighborhood. Although the store usually opened every morning, this morning was different. Milk and bread had been delivered, but due to the shutter being closed, all the items were outside the shop. The shop was run by the Chundawat family, who lived in his neighborhood. Guru Charanji had been their neighbor for the past 22 years, and for many years, a member of the Chundawat family would always open the shop at 6 a.m. One member of the Chundawat family also used to join Guru Charan Singh for the morning walk, but today he neither came nor answered the phone call. So Guru Charan Singh became worried and went to the Chundawat family's house. As soon as Guru Charan Singh went inside the house, he saw something that made his blood freeze. In just a few minutes, a large crowd had gathered outside the Chundawat house. Meanwhile, some police officers were pushing through the crowd to clear a path to the Chundawat family's home. When the door was opened, everyone, including the police and onlookers, was shocked to see what lay inside. The bodies of 11 members of the Chundawat family were found hanging together in the same room. They were tied with wire, blindfolded, and gagged. In addition to these 10 bodies, the largest woman of the house was found in the inner room, before revealing the secrets behind these occurrences, it is essential to know a little about the Chundawat family. Originally from Rajasthan, India, the Chundawat family had been living in Delhi, India since 1999. They had a successful flywood business and also owned a grocery store. The Chundawat family was known for being very helpful and having a cheerful nature, and they never had any financial difficulties. The biggest member of the family was 75-year-old Narayani Devi. She had two sons, Bhavanesh and Lalit. Her daughters-in-law were named Savita and Tina. Narayani Devi's husband had passed away in 2007 due to a lung disease, which was a very difficult time for the entire family. Narayani Devi also had a daughter named Pratiba. All three of them had children as well. Pratiba had a daughter named Priyanka, Bhavanesh had two daughters named Nitu and Minu, and a son named Dhruv. Lalit had a son named Shivam. The Chundawat family had been living together under one roof for the past 22 years, spanning three generations. Then one day, the entire family was found dead in their own home. When the police searched their entire house, they found many diaries containing instructions of some sort. Following those instructions, the Chundawat family had been living their lives for the past 10 years. Those diaries also contained some things that were hinting towards a different and unknown power. But where did it all start? Slowly, through talking to neighbors, it was revealed that the entire incident revolved around Lalit Chundawet. Lalit, a 45-year-old, was the most influential figure in the Chundawat family, but after a minor accident in 2004, he was so shocked that he stopped speaking properly. Then, after his father's death in 2007, during the final rites, for the peace of his soul, the Chundawat family conducted a 10-day ritual at home. All the days of the ritual were going well until one day Lalit started chanting Om loudly, just like his deceased father used to chant Om. When a neighbor asked Lalit what happened to him, he explained that his deceased father appeared in his dream and assured him that he would return very soon. Since that day, every evening there has been a devotional singing session in the family's home. Sometimes even neighbors would join. By 9.30, everyone in the house would start saying, it's time for dad to come. Through Lalit's phone, the police found out that he was very interested in topics like ghosts and spirits. He started watching paranormal shows on the internet daily and would often visit the cemetery. After the daily household prayers, everyone's lifestyle began to change. Alcohol and non-vegetarian food were stopped and everyone started strictly following the rules written in the diary. It was also written in that diary that after their deaths, a very supernatural power would save them from the clutches of death. Moksha is a concept in Hindu religion, which says that if a person does good deeds throughout their life and devotes themselves to God, they become free from the cycle of birth and death. 
In the diary, it was clearly written that they had to do certain things consistently six days before hanging so that they could hang themselves properly from the ceiling according to the instructions on the final day. The time of death was supposed to be between Thursday and Sunday night, between 12 Noverer and 1 Durs. It was written in the final act of the diary that when the ground shakes and the sky cracks, I will come to save you. The weirdest thing was that some people also claimed that whatever instructions were written in the diary, they were not Lalit's handwriting. Then who had been writing all those instructions in the diary for so many years? Were all those diaries being written by their father, Bhopal Singh, who died in 2007, even on the night when the whole family was celebrating or their murder happened? That night, the children and women of the house were seen on CCTV carrying stools and wire from the shop and entering the house, following the instructions in the diary that night. So did they already know what they were going to do? The police gradually began to trust that Lalit Chundavat had schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a mental illness where a person starts living in a separate world, detached from reality. In this illness, people also experience hallucinations. The police also believed that the entire Chundavat family had schizophrenia, where everyone starts following the patient because they are very close to each other and everyone starts trusting the patient. That the entire Chundavat family was falling prey to this delusion. Many people did not fully trust this story. Almost all questions about this entire incident have remained a mystery, becoming a terrifying story that shook the entire Delhi. What do you think? Be sure to comment in the comment section. And now for the other story, Begon Coder Railway Station. Gaurav was a ticket collector, and his posting was at a small railway station in a rural area of Bengal. The name of that railway station was Begun Coder Railway Station. It was nighttime, and Gaurav was going there for the first time sitting in a rickshaw. As soon as Gaurav reached there, the rickshaw puller started demanding money from him in a hurry. Sweat was clearly visible on the rickshaw puller's face. Anyway, it seemed like he was terribly anxious about something, and Gaurav was taking out money from his wallet when the rickshaw puller started saying to him, Hurry up, sir. I need to go fast. Gaurav didn't have loose change. The rent was 60 Indian rupees, and he only had a 50 rupee note. But before Gaurav could say anything, the rickshaw puller took that Rs 50 note and quickly took his rickshaw from there. Gaurav found the rickshaw driver's nervousness a bit strange, but since he had arrived late at the station, he had a lot of work to do. So, Gaurav ignored the rickshaw driver and went inside the station. Upon reaching the station, Gaurav met a staff member who was cleaning there. As soon as he approached him, the man smiled and left his work to show Gaurav the station. There was a ticket counter at the station and a small railway quarter for the TT. When Gaurav saw the station completely empty, he jokingly asked the staff member, Is it always this quiet here, or does anyone come and go? Upon hearing this, the staff member gave a strange reply. So he said, Yes, whether someone from the village comes or not, she will definitely come again. The employee remained silent when Gaurav asked him what he meant. In response, the employee didn't say anything and went to get tea to avoid the conversation. It was Gaurav's special first night there. Gaurav was sitting in the office, updating some registers when suddenly he heard the loud horn of a train. It was the first train of the night supposed to stop at that station according to its schedule. However, the train continued without stopping at the station. In the meantime, Gaurav noticed a girl running after the train on the platform trying to stop it. As soon as she reached the platform, she was nowhere to be seen. Gaurav thought it might be his imagination, so he returned to his office. About half an hour passed and another train arrived. This time, too, it didn't stop and continued on its way. Before Gaurav could investigate about the train, he saw the same girl running behind the train on the platform again. Gaurav called out to her several times, but she kept running after the train and eventually disappeared. Once again, as Gaurav reached the platform and the girl was nowhere to be found, Gaurav started feeling a bit strange. So, he decided to wait for the next train right on the platform. He thought the train driver would surely see him standing there and stop the train. 
About half an hour later, another train arrived. Gorov, standing at the station, saw the driver slowing down the train, but suddenly the color drained from the driver's face, and he accelerated the train again, swiftly pulling away from the platform. Gorov was about to shout to the driver when he saw the girl in the white sari running towards them, and she managed to escape from the running train ahead of the platform. Gorov could hardly believe his eyes because the girl was running faster than the speed of the train in front of his eyes. Seeing this, Gorov was completely stunned, and he ran back to his office, shutting himself in from within. Right then, what he had just seen had stunned Gorov. He sat in his chair, trying to calm himself down. Suddenly, what he saw from the office window onto the platform shook him to the core. The half-cut torso of a running girl was lying on the platform, supported by hands on the edge. Gaurav's face turned pale. Seeing the girl, he screamed and ran out of the station through the back door. Gaurav ran about half a kilometer from the station and found a man lying on the sidewalk. Startled by Gaurav's footsteps, the old man suddenly got up. Gaurav, panting, started blabbering to the old man about the accident. The man lying on the sidewalk recognized Gaurav's uniform and started smiling, telling him to change his posting immediately if he values his life. He explained that Bagunkador Railway Station is haunted and has been closed for nearly the past 40 years. Since it reopened in 2009, there have been various strange occurrences. It's believed that nearly 50 years ago, a girl was killed by a train on the outer ring of the station. Many believe her spirit still haunts the station, as no train stops there at night and her ghost is said to run in front of every train that passes through at night. Many who have worked there have either lost their mental balance or met with tragic accidents. Hence, nobody wants to work there and trains avoid stopping there at night. Gorav heard everything and left for his village that very night, leaving everything behind. This led to him being suspended from his job for a few months. But perhaps leaving the station saved his life. Do you think Bengal's Big Uncoder Railway Station is truly haunted? Was reopening it the right decision? Let us know in the comments.